we want you to, you know, feel free to um, ask a question. You know, we have the Gun Investment Board to send it. Uh, we also have Dr. Asari who's going to come on board. Um, in fact, um, yes, my brother. Uh, the gentleman that talked about the land, uh, he mentioned uh, about even after you identified the right for owners, they could have liens, they could have dealings with banks. How does one go to that level and find out whether or not the person that actually owns the land is not mortgaging the land? What, 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 do, what due diligence can you do to, to get to that? And if you want me well, when I was uh, speaking, I said if you want to acquire a land to enable you to know the history of the land and the status of your any land that you acquire, you should let the person give you a, a map or a site plan which is showing the limitation of the land in which you are interested. Having got that plan, then, then you proceed to the land agency office. And then with that plan, they keep records of ownership of lands. So they will be in a position to disclose to you whoever owns that land or what is the history about that land. Sometimes a particular land, the doctor will buy it, he transfer it to me, I will also transfer it to uh, David. David, and David will transfer it to you. So if a next person wants to buy, you will see a chain of the first transaction, second transaction, third transaction, and that will give him conviction that yes, that land was originally acquired by A, and it has carried on up to the last person who has bought it. Thereby, you'll be assured that you are buying from the correct owner. So whoever is selling to you, if his name does not appear, then it means that he cannot sell that. I hope I'm clear. Yeah, but what about if the land has been mortgaged? The right person owns the land. We have the right documents. We've got the land commission. We've got the site plan. We know this is the proper owner. But what if he's mortgaged it? What you said earlier, he's got a relationship with the bank that doesn't show up. At the Lands Commission, how do you find out whether or not that is a possibility or that's happening? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Uh, some of the uh, mortgages are just then internal. That one, it does not come on record, but the genuine ones, when you go to the bank, the bank will let you come and process your paper, and that will be on record. So if you want to buy that land as far as you see, that there's a mortgage from the land's records, it means that the land is not free to be sold. Maybe he has finished paying the uh, money that the loan that he collected. In effect, it means the bank will have to give him what we call a deed of discharge, which cancels the loan because he has finished paying it. And thereby, although it will be disclosed to you that he mortgaged it, it will also be disclosed to you that it has been discharged. It means there's no loan again. So always it's good when you check it. And then all this information will be given to you. And you're going to give the number out, you said. My Contact. number? I can give you two numbers. Okay, you will call me on any of them. Okay, definitely. Then let me give you the number. So okay. Are you ready? One second. One second. Zero five four seven six seven six nine zero six. Now the first one. Second one zero two double four five one two six zero six. My name is Ofusu Dangwa. It's a compound name. Ofusu Dangwa. Ofusu. Dankwa. Dankwa. Yes. Thank you. Okay, very good. Any other questions? Great. So after the conference, you, we can all interact. Yes, my brother. Okay. Greetings. 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 My name is Obiaro. Um, Something just hit me from what the sister said about the perception that the, um, those from the diaspora have money to be shot. This is my observation. 
normally, uh, one time I went with a, on a tour with a group of Rasta men. And this is what we did. You know, instead of dishing out money directly to the people, we bought whatever they were selling in large quantities and then distributed to those poor people within the same environment. So at the end of the day, our tour brought some improvement in the financial improvement in the local economy. Unlike certain tours which, when it's organized from one hotel to another and sightseeing, doesn't really benefit the people on the ground. For example, if a woman is selling pineapple or bananas, though you don't need it, but then you can buy it in large quantities. When you move on to another site, you see those who did really need it, then you give it to them. So in a way, the person who is selling it has made some money. He didn't dish it out to him, but they feel more content and more fulfilled when they get money that they really work for, instead of dishing it out to them. So this is one advice I would like to put across. Thank you very much. And then secondly, concerning the microfinance. Microfinance is supposed to help those down there. So to graduate and become a bank, it means you still left out those down there. So when you, ask, when you set up the microfinance, I think you should remain there and keep on helping those there. <laughs> Once you upgrade yourself to become a bank, then that's where you call for collateral and all these things, which the poor down there cannot afford. So that, well, that's my observation. Okay, thank you very much. government encourages including, and I, I wanted to fill in what I've left off, but I think you said manufacturing, agriculture, like health, education, export, and I thought I left off some other things. That they don't really require you to come with a big investment, but you can, or if, and if I didn't get that right, you can correct me. Okay, so um, there are some priority areas that the government encourages, but um, I think you have mixed them up. I am, after talking about those sectors, I talked about the minimum equity requirement and those companies that are exempted, I mean those kind of sectors that are exempted from the minimum equity requirement. So the priority um, sectors are agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, services, and under services I talked about health, education, and ICT. But um, in terms of those that are exempted from the minimum equity, I talked of manufacturing, export trading. And then I came in to talk about the individuals also that are exempted, that's Ghanaians who have attained citizenship in the diaspora, and, and foreigners who are married to Ghanaians and are resident in the country for a minimum of five years. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. Yeah. So again, the, the website, the website is in the brochure that, that those of you that got the program, the website for Ghana Investment Promotion Center is there. I bet you can go on the website and then you can just click Ghana Investment Promotion Center to get additional information. Yes, brother. I have another question for the gentleman, the microfinance. Okay. Uh, is Bayes Capital microfinance? Or did they start as microfinance? Are they at the top tier or is that a whole different thing? No, the, the one at the bottom, the fourth tier, yeah. that one, you don't need so much money uh -huh. at all. You don't need so much money at all. But where you take deposits, people's money, in addition to your capital, that is where Bank of Ghana will require you to pay a certain amount. It changes every six months or every year, it changes the amount. Now it's about uh, 250,000 cities. Four. First, taking money. You see, that is the third, no, that is the second tier. Second tier. What about Bayes Capital? The, the base, no, base, that's Bayes, the company, red and white sign. Bayes Capital. Bayes uh, Capital is now, is, is now um, a savings and loan. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, okay. 
Now he they grew gradually from. Did they start it? They started my my yeah. finance. It's still a micro finance, but it's, it's we call them non financial institution. You see, it's that one is first tier. Okay. Base capital is now on the first tier. Okay. Okay. It's the first tier. Okay, great. So after um, Dr. Sari gave us that our our last tidbit on uh, investment from another angle, uh, feel free to, after the conference, to talk to anyone here about uh, any information that uh, you may need. At this time, I want to